Okay, I've been out. Yesterday I was at Disneyland with this guy down here with uh, Arnold and Cubs, and so we've been having a blast. And I wanted to make a video about, <laughs> it's so funny, I wanted to make a video about the boycott and the strike. And it looks like it's gone into full spending spike where before it was a, uh, a, a strike against the Colossus offer. And I just want to put this out there first is like my number one complaint about the game is the randomness and the difficulty of the red star progression. First of all, to get a red star, five or six stars, horrifically expensive. And if you take a look at this video up here in the top right hand corner, uh, where I do the Red Star Simulator. I think I spent $5,600 in virtual money before I got my first Red Star character. Plus, that's going to be random. And the sheer power of Red Stars is what upsets me the most. And uh, if you take a look at the chart right here, you can see that a lot of people can get a four star. That's fine. It seems like most of my roster is leveling out at three and four stars, which is only a 10 and a 20% boost. But then we see the power just jump up. So the single most powerful thing in the game by far is Red Star and it's completely random. When Red Stars came out, I made five videos in a row saying how terrible the Red Star system is. And so anything that helps this problem is going to be better. And I wanna say that my opinion on the Red Star system has softened a little bit. I can see that most of my Red Stars have kind of leveled out at three and four stars and I'm happy when I get a five stars, but I have zero seven stars and I've got a handful of six stars. So when this uh, spending strike came out, I was uh, kind of taken back by it uh, because there's a bunch of different issues that they're addressing and uh, there was the original post right here uh, entitled State of Marvel Strike Force. Uh, then there was a blog post that came out that addressed a lot of the issues. And I'm gonna say personally, I was pretty happy with the blog post, mostly only because of the PVE system, but a lot of the things in here were not addressed. And I think one of the things that most people are talking about is the cadence of character releases and unfarmability of key characters like Colossus and uh, Black Widow's never been farmable, Minerva and, and so on. And um, some issues um, that people have, I think there's this uh, sentiment that everybody needs a lot more gold and everybody needs a lot more characters. If there was no scarcity in this game, what would the game be? It'd be a very strange game if there wasn't a, some scarcity of resources and if uh, the, certain characters were harder to get. If everything was free and we had everything all the time, that wouldn't be good. However, comma, like specifically with gold, uh, you know, I get a new character and what's the point? Because I'm never gonna have the gold to upgrade it. The strangulation has become too much. And so I think there's been a boiling point and people have had enough and that's why we're getting all these Reddit posts. So I wanna talk about about the Reddit post because uh, there was a response to the blog post and this was uh, earlier in the week on Saturday where they some of the stuff didn't make sense in uh, the last week's blog post put up by Marvel Strike Force and Fox Next. Like they said, they we we agreed to make two characters farmable per month, which doesn't really make sense when there's four sometimes being added to the game. So that's like a net negative. I really like the idea of if they introduce a new character that's only available, let's say in Orb and Blitz, they make one character farmable. There's other types of characters that are released by Milestones. So that's a little bit different. Or there's also characters that are legendary. So those are released in different ways. But in the traditional, you know, orbs, blitz, pattern, it would make sense to me if they introduce a new character like that, that a character that was introduced that way is made farmable, you know, maybe if it was four months ago or something like that. But it, as long as they have a plan, I think the community would be happier. Um, the RNG element of red stars and uh, gold orb fragments is incredibly frustrating. And I think at the top end, I just want to acknowledge this, at the top end, I think this is really upsetting whales because they just can't buy it. It's, it's unavailable to purchase. They cannot buy seven red stars. They cannot buy six red stars. And so I, I'm not necessarily sympathetic that they can't buy it, but I just really don't like that it's completely random. In response to the red stars, they, they Marvel Strike Force did say that they were going to put out more red stars, but it's such a small amount. And the amount of promotion credits that they're going to give uh, daily won't even add up to basically taking one character from four stars to five stars. And, and that's not really that big of a deal. We're gonna get basically enough to take one character from four to five 
over the course of a year, you know, because it takes 300 silver promotion tickets to go from a four star to a five star. And if we're going to get one a day, it's almost going to take a year. That still doesn't address the problem of going to a six and a seven star. It's still incredibly stifling. And as far as orange mats, I personally was optimistic about the developer's response saying that they're going to basically uh, put 150% more into the economy uh, and it's going to be less random and more farmable, especially in the new campaign modes. Uh, and they have three new campaign modes that are going to be coming out over the next three months. And that seemed to be an acceptable answer to me. And what the way that I got out of the blog post is, hey, we're going to let you know what's going to happen in advance. Maybe we wouldn't have talked about this, but because the letter was typed up, we're giving you more information now is kind of the way that I interpreted it. They said that we're going to get the hero mode this month and then one next month and one the following month. Fine. And a scarcity in itself doesn't bother me, but if it's uh, locked and paywalled be behind random orbs, it's really, really frustrating. So uh, there were more things uh, addressed in the post right here. And I think the number one complaint and complaint that I personally am having myself is the amount of low quality time. And uh, I know that in my guild, I have to play uh, probably two to three hours to remain competitive in a highly competitive top 20 guild. And some of the screen time is bad, uh, specifically in the Greek raids. It's just autoplay. Now, U7 is difficult, and I personally really like U7 and the difficulty of it. I'm not really sure if it keeps being stealth buffed or nerfed. I think a lot of it has to do with me uh, making poor choices, and I just need to learn and practice it more. But I'm quite often getting 30, 40 million in U7, and I actually enjoy that, that game mode quite a bit myself. So ISO 8, now, the person that titled this article is uh, is very against ISO 8. Um, this is not my opinion. I actually don't mind if they come out with some sort of new progression or customization, something more to do with the game. Personally, I'm okay with that. Um, but some people really don't want anything new. But I, for me, I really want more things to come to the game. Uh, my issue with ISO 8 is, is how is it going to interact with Red Stars? Is it going to be a similar system to Red Stars? If that's the case, I really don't want anything to do with it. But uh, if they're going to do something interesting that's going to allow for customization of characters, I'm all for it. Uh, mostly, if it does not include the speed mechanic, it'll be fine. And then they talked about the difficulty dial of U7. I I'm, I'm afraid that me personally, I don't have enough information to make a decision whether this is going to be a good or a bad thing. It looks like there's going to be more flexibility for the guild leaders to pick out certain things, and we'll see how that turns out. Ultimate 7 difficulty. I like that it's difficult, but there is some inconsistencies, and this looks like a simple fix. Uh, I hope that something like this will be fixed in the next patch or two. Uh, contacts list. Uh, I don't really want a contacts list. I don't want people messaging me. But the idea of the contacts list is that we'll be able to do real-time PvP. I think this was the best thing in the blog post uh, that I've heard ever, is that we're going to get real-time PvP. My understanding is that it's a copy off of a system on Summoner's Wars, and that is a good thing. And then it says, other items not covered. Gold needs to be addressed. Uh, scarcity is part of the game and resource management is definitely a part of the game. I knew that day one when I started playing it, but the amount of gold that we don't have is stifling and the amount of gold scales up drastically when taking a character from 70 to 75 with really very little benefit to the character stats other than their focus and resistance stats. The, the overall damage and health doesn't impact, it does not change much. It basically only affects the focus and the resistance and the amount of gold to go from 70 to 75 is outrageous. And so the problem with that is that we're barely getting enough gold every month to cover the new characters coming to the game. And there's actually a deficit unless you're spending. And uh, the problem with that is that I think it's actually stifling their uh, character sales because when a new character comes out, it's like, I don't have the gold to upgrade the character, so what's the point? Or how many characters in your rosters uh, you currently could upgrade to seven stars if you had an extra 500,000 gold lying around? It just seems to be uh, stifling to the point that the game is unfun. But I also think that everybody getting one billion gold in their account uh, would be unfun in a different way. So there's something wrong with the, the balance. Player council. Uh, I have mixed feelings about this. I, I do think that there's a lot of communication here on Reddit. Personally, I would not want to be in a player council or anything like that. Uh, but
but if they think this is a good idea, fine. Uh, I'm, I'm glad that the developers are actually communicating more on Reddit. If we go back to the beginning when the game started, there was next to zero communication with the community, where right now we actually see uh, the one of the two community managers sometimes posting on Reddit and at least acknowledging uh, this letter in the blog post, which is a big deal. And uh, a lot of my opinions on this are based off of another game I play. And I just wanna say that uh, just because I've had a 10 times worse experience on the other game, does it make what's going on here with Marvel Strike Force acceptable? But if I compare the two, Marvel Strike Force is just so much better than the other game that I play, especially in the way that the Fox Next de deals with the community. Hero. Yeah, there it, it's it's, but at the but at the same time, I understand that people are still not happy with it, and that my experience with Galaxy of Heroes being ten times worse uh, doesn't make an excuse for Fox Next uh, poor behavior at this time. And then they talk about. Um, Bug fixing, Delaware Arcade, and accountability. So uh, where it is right now is that there is a full uh, spending strike. And I kind of like the way this post is worded right here because uh, I'm not the type of person to say, hey, don't spend money in the game or judge people if they do spend money in the game. You know, you've earned the money. You spend it the way you want. Uh, make your decisions for yourself. You're a big boy. Do what you want. I'm, I don't feel like uh, telling people what to do. And so I, I do like, it says, uh, Fox Next is good at conditioning to spend. Be kind to folks who do choose to spend. We love 100% participation, but we know that it's not reasonable. The real cause of the game's problem is not our fellow players. So uh, if the community wants to band together and do this, I'm fine. If it helps fix the Red Star system or we get more gold, I'm going to be happy one way or another. Uh, but on the other hand, I, I'm not really a fan of people lashing out at other players for not uh, getting involved with this strike. I think everybody needs to make their own decision uh, let people vote on their wallets uh, making a case for or against spending is fine uh, at the end of the day I think it's up to each individual to do what they want in their money and if people want to spend a hundred thousand dollars in this game go for it if people want to spend no money on this game go for it that's the way it is let me know what you think in the comment section I hope that they fix the red stars and I hope they fix the gold at the end of the day that's the only thing I really want for the community and as always thanks for watching and keep on gaming leave a like